The latest salvos in the battle for Ngandla are being fired and we're heading towards the Constitutional Court next week for the hearing of all hearings that the Constitutional Court is going to have to rule on in terms of the role of the Public Protector of South Africa. But it is the era of, in Twitter terms, at Presidency ZA, where at any given minute the Presidency could come out with an earth-shattering announcement in the wee hours of the night. This is The Money Makers. I am Bruce Whitfield. Tonight we discuss political stability in a time where President Jacob Zuma is making a second about turn in as many months, probably the biggest about turn since he fired in Tlantlanene, hired the new guy, and then got Pravin Gordon back in the hot seat in the Department of Finance. Now the president is appealing to political parties to compromise on their constitutional court bid to test the strength of the public protector. Can President Jacob Zuma tell a foe from a friend? Joining me in the studio, Ralph Mateja, who is political analyst at the Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic reflection and via Skype is Prince Mashile. He's executive director at the Center for Politics and Research. Let's go to you first, Ralph Mateja. What an interesting 48 hours since a late night announcement by the presidency on Tuesday saying, you know what, we've got a plan. We can buy our way out of a very difficult political hole. Not so, not so fast, say the political parties. It's not working, Bruce, and I think that uh, perhaps the president thought that uh, people will chew over this through the night because he announced it later, the wee hours. Maybe he thought that the next day people will be calm, they will be much more conciliatory, and I think he woke up to the surprise that political parties are not willing to entertain that. Political parties are actually saying that, Mr. President, the window of opportunity for settlement is, has been closed a long time ago. Now we are going for arbitration. Prince, uh, last year's uh, State of the Nation address was all about pay back the money. This time, uh, Julius Malema at a media briefing earlier today was saying it's all about Ntlantlanene and the sacking of Ntlantlanene. Uh, Julius Malema talking up foreign investment, talking about up economic stability. At the same time, of course, is talking about restitution and talking about nationalization uh, and taking back the land. But talking, taking a different tack as we go towards State of the Nation this time round just how vulnerable is the president Look, the president is very vulnerable i think he was trying to dribble the eff by saying that he's going to pay back the money which is the call that the eff has been making all along but the eff have actually realized uh, the president's tactics and they have actually moved ahead of him um, they have abandoned this pay back the money technically but they are now pushing a different campaign uh, they want the president to answer for the decision he made last year in terms of firing Tanshanen. But broadly speaking, the president is very vulnerable. He goes into the state of the national address very, very weak. Ralph, uh, I'm going to just ask my producers to get hold of Prince uh, and uh, to try and get him on a better line. But we look at the president going to the State of the Nation address. He's going to be rattled. He's going to be fragile. He's going to be nervous. He's going to giggle a lot, one suspects, in the State of the Nation address this time round. But what Julius Malema was saying in his media briefing today was, if they don't get an answer, first up, on why Ntlantlanene was removed from office, that's going to be game on in the State of the Nation. It looks like another long night. It appears as if they are set on disrupting the president. And of course, uh, I think uh, maybe their uh, 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 strategy has been to follow this payback, the money. But now that the issue is almost off the table, particularly the issue of the money, now they want to raise another issue. I think that they are also going to be critically evaluated about this because it appears as if uh, there seems to have one strategy at hand here. I mean, disruption. Uh, president Jacob Zuma actually has suffered politically and his party is going to suffer about the bungle around in Tlantlanene. I don't really think in principle he owes them an explanation, but this is politics. Their aim yeah. is actually to expose him. Constitutionally, the president was perfectly entitled to make exactly. his own stupid mistakes. Um, and, and it was the blunder of blunders in terms of his presidency. But he goes into this with the, his relationship, his friendships with mm -hmm. the Guptas being called into question, Julius Malema, mm -hmm. bordering on xenophobic earlier today, dangerously mm -hmm. so, um, but criticizing the president and other cabinet members, close ties with the Guptas. Also within the ANC, the sense reading in last Sunday's papers, 
that members of the ANC are beginning to get a little bit uncomfortable with that very intimate relationship. It is quite disingenuous of members of the ANC to start uh, rising about, about this now. The issue has been there for quite a while. There are people who have written about this situation of state capture, the manner in which the Guptas actually have infiltrated procurement within the country. There are evidence showing that. But now you see members within the NEC from the SACP as if they are waking up to this. And I think uh, they are just using it uh, as the, uh, the, the election succession debate is looming or the succession tussle is looming. Actually, they are not in the right place to raise this. Maybe the EFF has got a case to make. The members of the NC are tainted. Some of them, actually, you can go back where they, you can find the quotes where they are saying that uh, the Guptas should do business. They have been supporting the president on that. And now this seems to be waking up to this, critically evaluating the president. It's all about political expediency. Mm. The issue, of course, is of critical importance about how the Gupta actually have captured the Zuma family. But the members of the ANC, I think that this ingenuous in trying mm. to get on that bandwagon of integrity now. Uh, Prince Michele, Ralph Matecha, you were, we were just dialing you up again, trying to get you on a better line. Ralph Matecha saying the ANC is in no position to be self-critical at, at present about the Zuma family's close relationship with the Guptas. But everybody seems to be jumping on that particular bandwagon, which gives us a very clear insight as to the fragility you were referring to of the president's position going to say to the nation. Look, um, the, this Gupta thing is actually a back door that is used by uh, people who are beginning to position themselves against Jacob Zuma, preparing to jump onto the bandwagon of the next guy. Uh, this we have seen, by the way, during the time of Tabumbeki, that when the term of a sitting president draws to a close, people begin to shift allegiance. So the Gupta thing, is a, they have realized that it's a point of vulnerability on the part of Jacob Zoom. So they are trying to position themselves so that the next guy can actually see them as if they were not all along part of the, uh, of the Jacob Zuma bandwagon. So it's a tactic used by the ANC. It has got nothing to do with integrity or, or morality. Uh, it's the rats abandoning the sinking ship, uh, I, I would suggest. Yes, it is. They, they realize that Jacob Zuma, there's nothing left really um, um, uh, on his part. So they want to abandon a, a sinking ship and get onto the next one that seems to be floating uh, compatibly. So they are positioning themselves. Um, you will see, um, uh, Bruce, very soon when the um, uh, leading candidates have pronounced themselves available, you will struggle to find anybody in the ANC who will say, I once supported Jacob Zoom. So this is actually a replay of what happened uh, when uh, Tabo Mbeki's ship was sinking. We'll get uh, a convention of National Party voters and Jacob Zuma supporters together at a very small conference venue, I suspect. Um, we, guys like you, Ralph, have for years been talking about the vulnerability of Jacob Zuma. Oh, this makes the president more vulnerable. Oh, the president is so vulnerable. He's so much more vulnerable. Yet he has remained impervious to criticism. Is this the beginning of the end, the end of the beginning? Where are we in the process? No, Bruce, you know what? I, I have maintained the position that as long as pressure to remove Zuma comes from outside the NC, it doesn't matter. No one directly elected mm. Zuma into power. The problem here, you look at the Ntlanda Nenesaga, the pressure that got Zuma to make a turnabout, it did not originate from within the ANC. It came from outside. The market's responses, the CEO, the business fraternity in South Africa, and also the issue around this uh, Nkandla, the pressure also is originated through EFF outside. The ANC actually is just sitting and observing. Uh, there is no indication actually that the, the, the risk around Nkandla has been dealt with within the ANC NEC. There is a quietism within the ANC. So as long as there is that, do not expect this to be at the beginning of an end. Jacob Zuma is still in charge. Actually, there were people who were saying that is the NC going to recall him. I said that, well, that is tantamount to saying, will Zuma recall himself? Because mm. as far as I'm concerned now, he's in charge of the internal structures of the NC. All these shenanigans and the blunders outside, they begin to matter because they affect South Africans outside. And it tends to be seen as to whether members of the ANC will use this platform that has been created outside and stage a mutiny oh, from we're not within seeing the, the beginning ANC. of that. Yeah.
Oh, we're not seeing the beginning. I'm not convinced. I don't mm. see people coming out. And I think that uh, the level of patronage, perhaps, within the ANC, it is so deep that uh, a lot of people are actually tainted. They cannot come up and speak. And I think it's got nothing to do with fear. I think it is the level of patronage to which people are beholden, maybe, to the lead. That is the only viable explanation. Why you can't hear any member of the ANC coming out openly and saying that, my name is so-and-so, I think this is wrong. I was at that meeting, I raised it. None. I know sources here and there. It shows the only person who is in charge within the NC is still Jacob Zuma. Prince Bashele, do you agree with that? Well, uh, I, I don't agree entirely because we have, by the way, um, uh, had voices who identified themselves from the recent Lekhutla of the ANC. You had um, the uh, second deputy general secretary of the uh, Communist Party who was um, on the NEC, Solima Paila, um, acknowledging that he did raise the issue of the, of the Gupta. I have seen as uh, by the way, uh, interviewed by uh, another TV station, acknowledging that uh, they have concern, they have concern uh, uh, about the, the coup d'etat. So I'm not, I don't wholly agree with, with Ralph on this one. Number two, we are not very far from the uh, 2017 uh, con elective conference of the, of the ANC. So these voices that are beginning to speak out, they actually have 2017 in mind. What makes them a little subdued is because there is an understanding on the part of everybody in the ANC that they have to work hard to win the local government elections. You must observe, um, uh, uh, Bruce, you will see after the local government elections, the ANC is going to be cacophonous, and um, this whole fear that is there now, I think it's going to disappear as people uh, prepare for 2017. It's so interesting, isn't it, Ralph? I mean, mm -hmm. the Zuma must fall campaign, and a lot of white South Africans have jumped onto this particular bandwagon, and everybody, yeah, no, suddenly becoming apparently political, uh, politically conscious. Um, what they possibly don't realize is, from an opposition perspective, the longer Jacob Zuma stays in power in the ANC, the better the our chances are of the opposition making inroads in the municipal elections and possibly beyond that as well. Exactly. The NC as a party will have to take uh, uh, responsibility and I think the NC is going to take a knock uh, uh, regarding Zuma. I, I think you can actually even calculate it. You can come up with an economic model to prime the risk of Jacob Zuma towards the ANC and look at the brand ANC and the numbers can show you exactly how much liability has been towards mm -hmm. the ANC. And th the sad part here, and to go back to just quickly, the sad part is that uh, there seems to be no recourse within the ANC against Jacob Zuma. There is no substantive recourse. You don't see people really coming out. The likes of Mapaila coming out, they were ardent supporters of Zuma. They are saying all this, not on the basis of principle. And they don't even have so much integrity. They've supported him so much within the ANC, and now they are looking into the succession. Hence, they are coming out now. I, 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 I want to hear people who are credible, people who, not people who are so close to him. Not who would people you like who to hear? Last question. <coughs> I don't know, but there are people <laughs> who are there. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Matecha, political analyst at the Mapun Gubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection, and on Skype, Prince Mashile, thank you for joining us, Executive Director of the Center for Politics and Research. There's never a dull moment in South Africa. Today has been no exception, and next week is going to be a week that is going to unsettle a lot of nerves economically, politically and socially. The FF is promising big mobilization on Tuesday the 9th as it goes to the Constitutional Court. And then, of course, on Thursday the 11th, the State of the Nation address in Parliament. Disrupted last year, security was called in and it all became very, very untidy. It looks like we're headed for another one. There'll be more tweets, no doubt, from at President CZA in the middle of another night. Till then, we'll keep you informed. Of course, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.